Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku. Bringing you a grand solar minimum update, Saturday, October 22nd, around 3 p.m. Mountain Time, 2022. We're in geomagnetic storm thanks to a coronal hole stream, which is kicking butt. And that should last for another 24 hours. But the big story, snow levels dropping and up to 15 feet of snow predicted for British Columbia. Keep calm. It's boom time. Florida drops below freezing. Tallahassee and others log the earliest freeze on record. It's true. Plunging Arctic air descended as far south as the Gulf of Mexico. And the likes of Crestview. Cross City and Tallahassee were among the Floridian locales to suffer their earliest freeze ever. This is a month before it typically freezes in the region. 28, 31, and 31 degrees for those cities. And I'm sure they were bundled up. First snow of the season falls in Mount Rainier's paradise, and it is a global warming paradise. Snow and cold expected to blow into North Dakota early next week as we have a winter storm system that is going to impact the West in a big way. Snowstorm expected to hit the mountains this weekend in the Front Range. Cold, windy weather on tap for Utah. We have a strong weather system impacting areas from the West to the Plains. An early season storm will continue with Roslyn's remnants as the system progresses into the Plains. Northwest rain and mountain snow will become heavy in the Rockies. High winds in the west will produce critical fire weather threats in the plains and potential for severe storms with damaging winds, large hail in the Midwest. And we're going to get to the models, but you may be asking, what is a Roslyn remnant? <laughs> well, Hurricane Roslyn is off the coast of Mexico, churning away with at Cat 4 at 130 miles per hour. Holy macaroni. That is going to slam into Mexico, wreak havoc, and make its way to Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus, over the next few days. And as it covers the mountains, it will weaken, but it is going to pump in moisture to the system. Take a look at the winter storm that's moving right now in the northwest and dropping down towards us here in the Four Corners by this evening. We should be overcome with snow and cold and there you can see Roslyn coming in to meet the front. As it crosses Mexico, this system is going to get fed some moisture. And that's going to be heavy snow for the Dakotas. And a frontal boundary here with severe weather, potentially for northern Texas and Oklahoma Monday into Tuesday and Wednesday as the system moves across to the east. And more snow is coming and nobody's bombing. Take a look at the snowfall total. Sunday, by Monday morning, we're going to have snow all the way down into the Four Corners region. Here is Monday day, heavy snow in the, look at that, the north, northern plains there. We're talking North Dakota. Montana is going to be the big winter chicken dinner in the west here. Could be up to three feet of snow in the high country. And later on in the model, we do have some more snow overlaying this area, and that will be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of this coming week. And there is more snow for the Northeast in the long term. Now, travel headaches possible as snow comes to the BC mountains. They have been screaming global warming and drought up there, and they better be prepared for a deluge. Here is the total precipitated water map, and it is showing just by Monday. Take a look at that. A week from now, there could be over 24, what is this, millimeters or inches? inches 24 inches of rain that could be 20 feet of snow and in fact it's showing up as 15 to 16 feet in some areas this is it going to be a huge snow event for alberta and bc over the next few days there's the first event followed by a second event and a third event holy macaroni northern washington could be picking up five feet of snow over the next week and a half so Get your shovels out. It's coming. Now, what to know about Mauna Loa and the increase? Well, we're going to get to the seismicity in a moment, but they've created a pretty good map on what happened in the past when Mauna Loa erupted. Mauna Loa erupted here in 84 towards Hilo. Now, lava flows from this region can reach populated areas in weeks to months. So if it starts flowing towards Hilo, there'll be plenty of warning before the lava reaches it. Back in 1859, Mauna Loa erupted and flowed to the north. So lava flows from this region of Mauna Loa can reach populated areas in days to weeks. And back in the 1950s, 
the South Kona flank erupted and lava flows from this region of Mauna Loa can reach populated areas in hours. Now, here's the southern flank. Lava flows from this segment of Mauna Loa can reach populated areas in days to weeks. So big threat if Mauna Loa begins erupting. And it's certainly rumbling. Seismic update. There are no quakes of note uh, except for Hawaii because we're keeping a close eye on what is going on there. Now here we are, just a few quakes near Pahala. Well, that's good news. And let's bring it into one day all magnitude. So very little going on up at the summit. Most of it down here by the Halina slump which could cause a tsunami there. So that's another issue. And we'll talk about that in another podcast. Worldwide Volcano News Update. All is quiet on the volcano front. Beautiful shot of Sangay in Ecuador. Eruption continues with gorgeous lava flows flowing at a very strange angle there. Space Weather News Update. We do have a massive coronal hole in that stream has reached us and we are in geomagnetic storm. In fact, in and out of geomagnetic storm over the last nine hours. Now, this is forecast to go on at least through tomorrow and maybe the 24th. So, we'll keep a close eye on that. As the solar wind, the phi angle here has shifted, and that's what kicked off that geomagnetic storm. Very little speed in the plasma speed, but the density is way up. So, we'll see if that speed kicks it up a notch to keep that geomagnetic storm going. As we just wrapped up our third episode of Cosmic Catastrophe, on Revolution Radio Freedom Slips, and we discussed the extraordinary biomass burning episode associated with the Younger Dryas cosmic impact and the subsequent impact winner. So if you're into that stuff, we're going to talk about volcanic eruptions before and after the Younger Dryas event, the platinum spike also coinciding with a volcanic eruption, and the fact that CO2 jumped so much geologically instantaneous, that this represents the burning of 4 million square miles of forest. Holy macaroni. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Join us tonight on Magnetic Reversal News for the release of Episode 3 of the Younger Dryas Cosmic Catastrophe. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. We love you. Be safe.